Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Now, we're going to close out this show by discussing some early season lines. Now, obviously, we're going to jump into the opening week lines a little bit. We did that at one point, what, maybe a month ago, roundabout. And we'll talk more about these as we get closer to the season. First thing that you want to talk about is Gary Anderson, who left Wisconsin to go to Oregon State and still has not been able to turn that thing around. Still to this day cannot turn it around. Left a great job like Wisconsin. For to Oregon go to Oregon State, State who is a three-and-a-half-point underdog <laughs> to Colorado at Colorado State. State in the first college football game of the year. Pretty sad. Now, they're playing at Colorado State, and I think that Mike Bobo has done a pretty good job with that program. But the fact that a Pac-12 school, when a coach has been there for, what, three years now? Yeah. The, when when he's been there, this will be his third This will be his third year. He's He's been there for two years, and you can't be favored over Colorado State? Give me a break, man. What is wrong with you? I just don't I don't understand it. Don't understand it. There's a lot of mismatch lines. Uh the first uh the first Thursday night Big Ten game is Ohio State at Indiana. Uh you're gonna see that often. That's gonna be on ESPN. I think there's six Big Ten games on Thursdays this year. And that was a huge thing. Ohio State said they will not host one. Michigan will not host one. Penn State will not host one on Thursdays. You know, so the the bigger the bigger teams in the conference are not going to do it. But Indiana, who needs something like that? Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense for, like, Northwestern. You know, they need TV. Uh, Memphis is a 27-point favorite over Louisiana Monroe to kick yeah, things that's off. That's a huge That's number. a Thursday game. That's a huge, huge number. Uh, Navy at, uh, at Florida Atlantic. Navy is a 14. Uh, no, it's already been bet down to 13-and-a-half. So, 13-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, Florida Atlantic is the most experienced team in the country, and – that's Lane Kiffin's first game. It's that first Friday, September 1st. I am excited as you can get for that. That's going to be massive. It'll be interesting. That's a pretty good-sized number, too. Yeah. So they're not giving Florida Atlantic a lot of credit. You got that right. Colorado State that we just talked about, they are an eight-point underdog at Colorado. I don't think they have a whole lot of faith in Colorado this year, but we'll see. Uh, other interesting lines, Louisville, 26.5-point favorite over Purdue. Jeff Brom's first game. Uh, he played quarterback at Louisville under Bobby Petrino. And Petrino, it looks like, is just going to beat him to death. That's what it looks like to start out with. Um, anything else interesting? Cal is a 12-point underdog to North Carolina. At North Carolina. That makes sense, traveling across the country. LSU, 13.5 over BYU. Not surprising. Texas is a huge favorite over Maryland on that first week. 17.5-point favorite. And I, I think they believe in uh, Tom Herman a little bit because Maryland was actually all right last year under D, uh, DJ Durkin's first year. Uh, let's see, anything else? South Carolina is a five-point, well, four-and-a-half-point underdog to North Carolina State in Charlotte. Michigan, a five-point favorite over Florida. Uh, Florida State is a seven-point underdog to Alabama. I think a lot of that has to do with perception. Uh, West Virginia, who we will talk about momentarily, is a four and a half point underdog to Virginia Tech at where is that FedEx Field? FedEx Field, yes. Yeah, Landover, Maryland. Landover, Maryland. Texas A and M a three point underdog at UCLA and Tennessee a three and a half point favorite against Georgia Tech in Atlanta in Mercedes Benz Stadium. Those are your opening week lines. How do you feel about them? I Man, I think a lot of them are close. A lot of them are what I would expect them to be. Anything stand out? No, I don't think Vegas is doing anything too funny. No, nah, not yet. In in week one, I think these are probably pretty true to better perception. So we'll get into this. I come from, I'm not going to say a family, <laughs> but but a, a group of people that is close to me of bookies. Okay, People yeah. who have illegally taken, made livings off of sports gambling. Right. Um. By doing that, I've learned from a real, real young age, this is about better perception. This is not always what Vegas thinks is actually going to happen, but it's about the psychology of how to get action on both sides of the line or to make people bet one way that they believe is the wrong way. Okay? Right. If they feel strongly about a game one way or the other, they will 
actively people think that they just want to get fifty percent of the action on each side of the line. For the most part, no. Yes. Vegas wants to win. They want to win. A lot of times they want to do that when they don't feel strongly one way or the other about a game. When they feel very strongly about it, they want to push as much action as possible to one side. Yeah. And and so with these opening week lines, it's like most opening week lines. There's a lot of vagueness. It you know your big name programs are going to be bet up higher than your small schools just because of the betting influence. Yeah, more people are going to bet Notre Dame than the team they're playing unless they're playing an Alabama or a Texas or a USC because they're Notre Dame. Yeah, they've they just have, got a name. They have huge following. So their line's always going to be, you know, if you want to bet them, you're going to pay a premium. Yeah. That sort of thing. So week one, everything looks pretty kosher to me in in week one. It's when we get past week one that we're now, looking week, at. Week one has got some – week one has some huge, huge games. Oh, they got some big games. And they got some big numbers, too. Big games, big numbers. Um but they've also got big games the second weekend. Let's go on and jump to September 9th. All right, okay. so let's let's talk about these SEC games first. TCU is a one-point favorite over Arkansas. Clemson is a five-point favorite over Auburn. Now, Clemson's at home. TCU is on the road at Fayetteville and still a one-point favorite. Notre Dame at home is a three-point favorite over Georgia. And we just talked about better perception. Yeah. And I would I would bet a true line for that would probably be close to a pick'em for Georgia. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right. But but because Notre Dame brings the following, and Georgia's got a second year coach, they're gonna skew a line towards Notre Dame. So if you want to bet Notre Dame, you're gonna pay a premium. Yeah. But if you want to bet Georgia, you're you're gonna get a discount. Oh yeah. You're gonna get them on the cheap, big time. Uh, other big games on September 9th, we've got Nebraska and Oregon. Oregon is a seven-point favorite. At, we will come to learn Nebraska is not regarded very highly by Vegas. Yes. Whatsoever. Uh, Pittsburgh at Penn State. Pittsburgh beat Penn State last year. What was it, 42-39? Mm-hmm. That, and that, that, that game basically kept Penn State out of the playoff. And, and Pitt is a really good team. They're yeah. always a good team. They're always a tough team. But Penn State is a 17-and-a-half point favorite. Now, I think a lot of it has to do with they lost their quarterback, they lost their offensive coordinator, they lost their running they, back, James Conner. They lost like, a lot on offense. Yeah. A lot. Coaching and playing. Oklahoma at Ohio State is the big, big game that week. Uh, and Ohio State is only a seven-point favorite over Oklahoma. I wish I could have seen what this line was going to be before, before Bob Stoops before left. Stoops left. I'm sure it was probably around. Do you think Stoops three, is worth three four. or four points? I think so. I think so too. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the next week, September 16th, Oklahoma State is a three and a half point favorite over Pittsburgh. I don't think that they regard Pittsburgh very highly. This is at Pitt, by the way. Yeah, but I, man, I actually think that Vegas likes likes OK State. Looking through these lines, I think, I, I think, I think so. they're going to be favorable in a lot of them. Now, only favored by three and a half. At Pitt, when Pitt is a 17.5-point underdog against Penn State, I think that means they like Penn State a lot. I think those top teams in the Big Ten are going to be huge favorites in most weeks. Yes. And here's the reason why. I think they're going to have to get style points. Oh, yeah. A lot to, of style points. To get to get led into the committee. We saw last year that Ohio State just had style. Yeah. They had some huge wins. They had the name, and they had the, the numbers to back it up. That is correct. I think Penn State will do – that same thing. They're going to beat teams to absolute death yep. next year. And they've got I, I the receivers. All, I think all three of those teams have to. They've got the receivers. They've got the quarterback coming back. And they've got uh, Saquon Barkley at running back. And he is, whew, man, he's otherworldly. Uh, they've got Clemson Louisville on September 16th. That's a pick em. It's at Louisville this year. I think Louisville's going to be looking for, for a little bit of revenge because they should have won that game last year. They should have won that game. I, this is where I'm going to find out. Did I make a mistake picking Louisville? Yeah. I'll learn early. Yes, you will. Third week. Tennessee at Florida. Florida is a nine and a half point favorite. Holy <laughs> so God. So they don't mind. respect Tennessee coming back this year. They're agreeing with me. They think Butch Jones is going to get fired. Yeah. I think I think you're probably right. Uh, another interesting one, Miami at Florida State. Florida State's a 12 point favorite. That is a 
Way bigger number than I was expecting. Well, I think the reason being is that Miami will be starting a brand new quarterback on the road for the first time, and you don't want to go on the road for the first time against Derwin James in that defense. Is, is that Miami Florida State game usually at the end of the year? Not the no. last game of the season. No, but it's, is it it's always early. like the second week? It's always pretty early. I mean, that's crazy. It it started to be pretty early because both of those teams kind of fell off for a little bit. And, but and that's they never because all of those like wide rights from Bob, you know Bobby Bowden teams. Well, a lot of those were like, like right in the middle of the season. Were they? Yeah. For some reason, I guess I've watched the thirty for thirties and the the documentaries. Well, because Florida ESPN's State and Florida is right at the end of the year every year. Well, I knew that. And Miami has no other real rival. You know this this was a built up TV rival. You know that's all it is. Well, they weren't just built up TV rival. Those two teams played for the national championships with the winner of that game. Oh, multiple year. times, yeah. Yeah, multiple times. Uh, the other big game that weekend, which may not be that big because I think USC is going to run away with it, Texas at USC. So the first rematch of the epic 2005 Rose Bowl. And USC is a 12-and-a-half point favorite. The direction these two schools have gone since then. Well, not think about it because USC dropped off too. No, they, that's what I'm saying. They, yeah, oh, both of them, yeah. I'm not talking about – I think they're going to be good this year, but up until this year, after that game, man, they just haven't been the same. Tell, tell me this. Who do you think is a better coach? What? Clay Helton or Tom Herman? Interesting, right? Yeah. Because nobody would have regarded Helton as that. He, he was almost have, fired at the beginning right. of last year. Nobody would have given Helton the credit. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm not, I'm not crowning Herman yet. I'm I like him. I think he's got potential to be really, really good. I agree. I agree. All right, let's jump to uh, Saturday, September 23rd, Oklahoma minus eight at Baylor. Why is that line only eight? I cannot figure out why they love Baylor so much. There are several of these lines. One of the trends that we have found in this is that they really like Baylor this year. Yeah, a lot. Is that just a lot of respect for Matt Rule? I mean, I love the I think it's a lot of respect for Matt Rule. I think it's a lot of respect for the talent that is still in Waco. That and, was left over by our brawls. And you just figure if you can make those guys tough, they're going to be hard to beat. Yeah, basically. I'm really anxious to watch them. As much as I hate what happened at that school and I want to despise that whole program. Love I, Matt Rule. I, I really think the world of that guy. Yeah, I do too. I, I want to see him succeed, even though it means seeing Baylor do well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's kind of hard. Well, it's, it's not – I don't hate the program – I hated the people that were around it and like allowed all those heinous things like yeah, but like it, gang raping to be initiated. There's into the there's football nobody program. left other than I mean the maybe players. some of the kids. That's the problem. But, nobody but, left but the people who did the raping. Right, but, but I, isn't I that think the most asinine when, thing in the world. Yeah, but the kids that did the ra- that were like proven that they did the raping, like they but, are gone. But we don't have but like four of them that are proven. But we know that it was a part of the culture. For a long enough time that we have to assume a lot of them are a involved. lot of these players, if you're a sophomore, junior, or senior on that team, you probably had something to do with somebody. There's a really good chance you raped somebody. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that they really – I think the, the sports books really like Oklahoma State. They're yes. a four-and-a-half-point favorite at home against TCU that weekend. I know you love Oklahoma State. I lo- but I love TCU, too. I think the winner of that game is going to win the conference. Okay. okay. That's that's where I stand. That's where I draw the line. I think those are the two best teams. That weekend, we got two more games. we got Notre Dame, a four-point favorite at Michigan State. They don't like Michigan State very much. Well, neither one of these teams were good last year. No, and they don't really like either one of them. No, and they don't – I was about to say, and neither one of them, other than opening week – for Notre Dame. And you'll see Notre Dame get some love in these. That's just because they're trying to get people to bet money on Notre Dame now. Because once the season starts, I don't yeah. think a lot of people are going to be betting money I, on Notre Dame. I think, I think you're probably right. <laughs> uh, Arkansas and Texas A&M in Arlington. A&M is a six-point favorite. All right. Okay. Okay. So they got a little more respect for A&M. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. And more, way more than I do. Yeah. Way more. I, no, I still think that A&M wins this game. But I, I don't think either one of those are very good teams. I think that's going to be the SEC game of the week. But, yeah, we'll see. Uh, September 30th, Clemson at Virginia Tech. Clemson is a seven-point favorite. I'm going to be watching this game. Oh, yeah. 
I think this number is seven points because everyone is believing in Clemson. They're the defending national champions, and you want to get action on them then. I think Justin Fuente is a fantastic coach. Awesome coach. And he will have this game circled. That's right. I That's think right. so. This is – he's had one full year to recruit. This will be his coming out party. Yeah. Not necessarily his coming out party. Usually your third year is when you want to kind of say, all right, this is my well, team yeah, because they, swing in the D. Third year, will he'll have a second-year starting quarterback. Yeah. This but year, you know, this they year, replaced Jared Evans. I, I, think, I think they can be good. I see what Vegas is trying to do. They're trying to get action on Clemson. Yeah, it makes That's sense. That's what that tells me. Makes sense. Georgia is a one-point underdog at Tennessee. That surprises me. I, you know, Tennessee was a nine and a half point underdog at Florida. Like, are you telling me that Florida is that much better than Georgia? Than Georgia? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, I tried to tell you that the other day. That's. I mean, I I, I told you <laughs> that uh, that Florida is going to beat Georgia. I told you that. But, but I, just I just don't believe in Kirby Smart. And I don't think Vegas does either. Not right now. You might be right. The next week, Thursday, October fifth, Thursday game. Louisville at NC State. Louisville's only a three and a half point favorite. Now, what, they, what do you think is going on here? They respect NC State a lot. Dave Doran, like we said before, really doing things there. Uh, I'm just, I'm a little surprised. It is a little. It's a Thursday night game. Okay. Yeah. So those Thursday night home teams usually get a lot of love from the books. Yeah, that makes a sense. lot of love. But I mean, my gosh, that's three and a half points, and Louisville. I mean, for most part, for the most part, Louisville is, is a big favorite in what, a lot of games. What what that's telling me is is they think NC State's going to win that game. They want you to bet Louisville. That that's a sense. trap. It looks like they're trying to get you to fall into. That makes sense. Saturday, October 7th, LSU is a two-and-a-half-point favorite at Florida. Is there a game that LSU will be an underdog in besides Alabama this year? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think I they've really got more don't. talent than everybody. I think they've got the perfect combination of, of offensive coordinator and defensive, and defensive coordinator. coordinator. And That's all right. Edward Jordan has to do is sit back and watch. Get and just guys recruit. fired up. Yeah. But which is what he's good at. What's yeah. he good at? Recruiting and getting guys fired up. You What's he right. not good at? Coaching. Yeah, you got that right. Alabama's a 12 and a half point favorite at Texas A&M. I think it may end up being worse than that. Yeah, but opening opening book right now, they're not going to make that line that big. They want to see how they Sumlin shouldn't. comes out. And some of these other Alabama lines are insane. Well, yeah, but insane. You're talking about a division a divisional game against a program like A and M on the road. You're you're chalking someone up to being dead and gone, fired, done, and not good this year. If something happens and they start out on fire and they're playing great. I mean, what they were both undefeated last year, going into the Bama game. Yeah, no, you're and, right. And that, and they had Bama on the ropes, going into halftime. Yeah, and then they got smoked. But <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> I, I like how you talk that up until the second half. Like, <laughs> but that's what happened. I mean, I'm just I telling you what happened. I saw it. I watched it. I, I believed. It I was, believed. I believed, and then I lost. I bet it was against fourteen Alabama to thirteen. So much, and I can't tell you, it was the most. Depressing. Unfulfilling thing on the planet to finally win one when they got beat by Clemson. Yeah, because we, of course, because I we hate don't Clemson. like Clemson. Yeah, I hate Clemson. All right, anyway. the, the other game, uh, our other two games. Kansas State is a seven point underdog at Texas. That's a little surprising because I think they've got a lot of respect for Texas. Yeah, a lot of respect for Texas. They really do. Michigan State is a seventeen point underdog at Michigan. That I'd, I'd circle that one just because it is such a big number. Yeah, and they always play that close. I mean, even last year, as bad as Michigan State was, they almost beat Michigan. Yeah, it was a close ball game. So, very, very I close. Don't, I think they're hoping that people will look at the records from last year. If you're going to make a bet today, and you're if you're in Vegas and they're trying to get you to bet action in the middle end of September, I think they're just saying, "Man, Michigan State won three ball games, and Michigan was, you know." Three and nine, a hair away, yeah. a hair away from a hair. You know, a national maybe, championship. Maybe making the playoffs. You know, yeah. I, I, you got to say that's got to be a big number. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, Saturday, October fourteenth, we got some big SEC matchups. 
Arkansas is a 28-point underdog at Alabama. That's probably right. That's, yeah, you <laughs> might. I think you're probably right. That's probably right. A&M is a four-point underdog at Florida. Man, that's really shocking. So they respect A&M. I think they respect A&M. I don't think they respect Tennessee. So let me ask you a question before we get to the Tennessee game. Do you think Florida having all those home games helps their home field advantage or hurts it? I think it helps. Because I think at some point in time, you can't get, get – it's really hard to get your fans fired up for every damn game. And they play every game at home but two true road games. They go to Missouri and they go to South Carolina. And other than that, they either no, play they play, uh, they play at Kentucky. They either play a neutral – I thought they only had two. I got the schedule right in front of me. And then they play at Kentucky. They got Arlington, Gainesville, 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 oh, Lexington. Okay. Yep. All right. And then at the end of the year, they finish with the both Columbias. But I just, I just got to think at some point in time, your fans are not going to get up for a game. Like, they're going to show up and, man, we've been here three, four weeks straight. You know, we're I, starting I to think, run out of beer money. I think if – now, here's like the I thing. Like, I can't tailgate every weekend. I think that they will be on fire if they are – good if they're good then they'll be fine if they're not good then people will stop showing up about this point well i don't know if they're going to stop showing up i still think they'll sell out every game i just think it's a matter of what will the crowd be like i'm with you i'm with you i think that many home games could actually end up being counterproductive let's jump off that auburn at lsu lsu is minus seven I, I think that's that sounds about right i think that's about right Let's look at this one. TCU at Kansas State is a pick 'em. That's crazy. To that's me. an old man that, Snyder pick. That's right about there. to say. That's exactly that. They love Bill Snyder. Uh, Saturday, October twenty first. Louisville at Florida State. Florida State is an eight point favorite. So that's probably right in the perception of betters. But trying to get what does the public think? The public thinks Florida State's probably a little bit better than a touchdown. Yeah, but we all did see what happened last year. They beat the hell out of Florida State. What was State. it, sixty-six to twenty? They beat them like a. And they could have. They could have scored ninety. If I know that, I know that Petrino joked about trying to put up a hundred. They could have scored ninety if they wanted. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right because they smoked them last year. But that game was at Louisville last year. Yeah, it was so. at eleven a.m. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tennessee at Alabama. Alabama minus twenty-four and a half. Now, Alabama's a that ain't enough four points. and a half point favorite. Good lord! Well, Tennessee's garbage. Auburn is a seven point favorite at Arkansas that weekend. That's probably about right. Oklahoma State is a three point underdog at Texas that weekend. That is the one that I I just find. I told you. I think that they've got a lot of respect for Tom Herman and Texas. Texas has got a talented roster. It's probably the second most talented roster in the Big Twelve. And you're probably right on that, but <laughs> I can't, you, you seem like you're shocked. I just can't understand why Texas has been so bad the last two years. I, 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 think, I think Charlie maybe, Strong is a hell of a coach. Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm still believing in something that's. I think not maybe true. what whatever he was doing at Texas did not work, and I don't know what it was. Because it worked everywhere else that he'd been. Everywhere else. And here's the thing. What he was notorious for is the same thing Herman's notorious for. Super hard, crazy intense practices. Like, usually you go from a hard-nosed, tough football coach to, like, a player's coach and a finesse guy and everybody's best friend. You you rarely go from, like, the hard, you always want the different, the thing you didn't have. Herman's not a lot different. They both learned under Urban Meyer. They both coached under Urban Meyer. One yeah. coached offense, the other coached defense. They run their training camps a, a, almost the exact same way. What's different? Now, you brought it up earlier, the, the we're, support from the boosters. We're going to hit something else here they in look just different. a second. At, first off, Michigan is a six-and-a-half point underdog at Penn State. Sound about right? Yeah. Reasonable for that weekend. Whoever now, the home team is is probably going to be favored. Now, Saturday, October 28th, Texas is a two-point underdog at Baylor after being a three-point underdog at home or a three-point favorite, favorite at home against Oklahoma State. They're, they're a now dog. a dog at Baylor. So we, we talked about this. 
Vegas loves Baylor. Yeah, and I, it scares me to death because I don't think Baylor's going to be very good. All right, so what I wonder what this is, is is Vegas looking at the players on the field and the coaches and saying, we're, we're truly evaluating this team, but what is the public doing? The public is saying, I hate Baylor, so I'm just going to bet against Baylor. I don't think they're going to be good. And Vegas is saying, come on. <laughs> bring it bring, on. Bring me all that money. That's why we build these big-ass buildings. Yep. I Pin- wonder if that's – are we just way off on Baylor? I mean, it's entirely possible. That might be a team They've that got for a t- the first couple of weeks, I'm just going to bet them just to see how I do. It's probably not a bad idea. Well, I don't know about the first couple of weeks because, I mean, my God, they're playing crap. Yeah, but if the lines are skewed wrong. Oh, you may be right. You may be right. I mean, if they're skewed even a little bit wrong. Yeah. You can make you, you can you, make some dough. You can make some dough. Penn State is an eight-and-a-half-point underdog at Ohio State that weekend. I think that's probably right. I think Ohio State is still the – Imagine what the horse is going to be like on a Saturday night, Halloween weekend for Penn State after Penn State beat them last year. Yeah. I think I it's going to be I could see up. I could see that being a good line today. When that game's actually played, that line's probably going to be three, four. If it's three or four, I'm betting big on Ohio State. Go ahead. You might lose that game. It's entirely possible. But I think they're going to be fired up for that one. That was the only game they lost last year until the playoff. Well, let's see. Let's see. And they what lost happens on, if, a, on a fluke. What happens if Barrett comes out looking a little sluggish first couple of weeks of the season, making some mistakes? They still win in ball games. They're still beating up a lot of these scrub teams. Yeah, if it's something like that. And then... Penn State is gangbusters. What I mean, happens? You, you may be right. Well, if if that happens, I mean, maybe it's Ohio State minus two, you know, something like that. Nothing, nothing crazy. Also, that weekend, cocktail party, world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Georgia one point underdog against Florida. That's probably a right line. Pro- right probably now. about right for right now. I think that'll probably change by the time we get there. I don't know that it's going to move a lot. I don't think it'll move a lot. I think Georgia might be favored by one. The reason I say that is, I remember, I've got Georgia starting out 7-0. and That's right. And the the schedule is easy enough, even if Georgia's like 6-1. and one, You could still have Florida losing to Michigan, Florida losing to who, LSU before that. Yeah. Um, so Florida could end up, you know, 5-2, and two, not looking great. And I think you could get line value. Probably. So, uh, Saturday, November 4th, LSU is a 12-point underdog at Alabama. Seems like a lot of points. Right now, it's probably right. The before, two between them didn't even score 12 points last No. Before, before the season starts, though, other than me being a big LSU fan, nobody else in the country is picking LSU to beat Alabama or be competitive with them. Not probably to be competitive with them, but, but not, not to beat them. I think LSU's offense is going to be a lot more oh, risk-taking this year. I think we're going to be worlds better than we're we're, Worlds better, but I think played. they're going to take a lot of risks, and I think that that could lead to points both ways. That's right. Oh, Because no. last year there, were, there was no, no risk-taking. No, no. Orgeron played that game about as close to the vest as you could play it. Oh, yeah. I but mean, he, he, I mean, he threw he the ball kinda, like five times. Like. He kind of <laughs> had to, though. Look yeah. what his quarterback situation was. He knew if he put it in their hands, he loses the game. Exactly. And, he, and they almost won just based on defense. Yes. So, um, other big games that weekend, Texas is a three-point underdog at TCU. Sounds about right. That, that, they they like. love TCU and they love Texas, yeah. so three points for the home team sounds about right. Uh, Oklahoma is a four-point favorite at Oklahoma State. So you brought it up early. Why this game is being played the very beginning of November is weird to me. Yeah, I haven't figured that out yet. And Oklahoma plays West Virginia to close out. They got they've got Oklahoma who's who's got a ton of talent coming back. But they've got a first time head coach yeah. on the road in Bedlam. There's no way on earth I'm taking a rookie head coach in Bedlam. I'm just not doing it. Now Bob Stoops be. had a hard time winning this game consistently. Yeah, you may be right. You may be right. Uh the other big game, the last big game that I see anyway. Um, Virginia Tech is a six-point underdog at Miami. I think that could possibly change. It all depends on quarterback play. Like we we don't know anything about any of these teams. Any of these teams. So that's far. right. I like both those teams a lot this year. Friday, November tenth. There's not a lot of big games on November eleventh, but Friday, November tenth, you got Washington as a one and a half point underdog at Stanford. You think David Shaw's got this thing turned around? I mean, he he had a, a nice. Season win total last year, but 
God, that offense was dreadful forever last year. No, they went several games just looking really bad and just playing terrible teams. That's how they were able to get wins. Yeah. I don't know if they do or not. I mean, they, they didn't even that... score an offensive touchdown, and they beat Notre Dame. Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah, Notre Dame was garbage. Man. Oh, I know, but they they scored seventeen points on special teams and defense. I think I would I would ride if I had to make a pick now with Peterson in that game. I think I'd agree. One, if you're trying to get people to bet it today, you're, you're probably Sounds about right. One, well, especially game. because it's at Stanford and Washington beat them forty four to six on a Friday night. The only thing year. I can think of is Vegas is begging you to take Washington here. Yeah. Before the season starts, we're you know two months away from real football happening. We're probably four months away from this game happening. Yeah, Vegas is trying to get you to. They're begging you to take Washington. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Georgia is a ten point underdog at Auburn. That is a really big line. That rivalry is the longest running rivalry in the South. They've been playing that game over a hundred years. Yeah, I can't imagine. Now I don't. I'm not big on Georgia this year at all. But you're not big on Auburn either. But I don't know that 10 points in a big rivalry game, that's a lot of points. It's, yeah, especially in that game. Doesn't, doesn't make that. a lot of sense to me. Uh, Arkansas is a 16-and-a-half-point underdog to LSU. Sound about right? It, you think Arkansas is going to be really bad. That's probably right, but I don't. It's in Baton Rouge. Yeah. I need and to they see did beat LSU. the hell out of Arkansas last year. I need to see. Yes, that was the, that was the first big explosive offensive game. That yeah. they had, it where was, they just it was big. said we're going to score forty and we're going to beat the crap out of people. I'm really curious to see LSU's offense. Yeah, I'm putting a lot of stock in this team, and I have no idea what they're going to look like offensively. I don't think anybody does. I just know there's that there's it, just a lot of faith in be, Matt Canada. It has to be better than it was. Man, we are rolling so long on this one. Sorry, <laughs> no, it's all go. good. Sorry, it, it, partly my fault. Uh, Saturday, November 18th. We're almost to the end of the season here. Saturday, November 18th, not a lot of big games that weekend. I mean, you've got USC and UCLA. USC is a 15.5-point favorite. Nebraska, Penn State, Penn State, 17.5-point favorite. Wisconsin, Michigan. Wisconsin is a three-point favorite at home over the Wolverines. Man. Sounds about reasonable. Yeah, I bet that's going to be a night game. Dude, night games in Madison are so great. That is that is my my dream to one day get to Madison for a night game. I agree. LSU seven and a half point favorite against Tennessee in Knoxville. That's probably right. Sounds about right. It, it, honestly, if it was seven and a half, you know, later on, I think I might take LSU. Well, we need to see what Tennessee looks like. They might not have a head coach. They might be coaching exactly. with an interim in this game. Texas is a six point favorite at West Virginia. Now, and we'll More we'll talk time. about this. We're after, gonna get we're gonna get into West in Virginia just a, a little bit. Um, and then Saturday, November twenty fifth, rivalry Saturday. Baylor is a six-point underdog on that Friday at TCU. Sounds right. Yeah. Right. All right. Now, Ohio State is a six-point favorite over Michigan. Mm, that maybe sounds about right because you really don't know what Michigan is. Today. They only got five returning starters. That's so. right. Um, West Virginia. Let, you know, what? before we jump on that one, Alabama six and a half-point favorite at Auburn Probably. seems seems a little low. No, no, no. That's a that's the Iron Bowl. You're on the road. Auburn's the one team that likes to beat you whenever you're playing for national championships. Makes sense. I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, it, it seems low right now just because they're such big favorites over everybody else. Yeah. But. I think that's probably right. Probably about right. Florida State, four-point favorite at Florida. That's probably right. Georgia, two-and-a-half-point favorite at Georgia Tech. Oh, that's small. That's real small. I don't have a lot of faith in Georgia Tech. Yeah, year. I don't either. Uh, Texas A&M, 12-point underdog at LSU. I'm really curious to see what Texas A&M team we get at the end of the season. Yeah. It depends on coaching situation and everything else. It also depends on whether or not Texas a and quarterback. Like, Jay Kubinak, yeah. I don't think, is is their quarterback long-term. Like, it, I just don't but buy they, it. But if they end up showing up with a quarterback, then... Then, it, I mean, yeah, it could I mean, be lower than 12. If they're 8-3 and three going into this game, they could be dangerous. Yeah. Clemson, 10-point favorite at South Carolina. Seems like a lot of points for they're, that game. They're begging you to take Clemson right now because nobody yeah. believes in South Carolina if you're not a South Carolina fan. True. All right, and the last one that I wanted to talk about, West Virginia, 22-point underdog at Oklahoma. Now, for those that have been keeping count, West Virginia I is a – go ahead, read it off. I got it right here. So this is the team that if you are looking at the Golden Nugget and the sports books in Vegas – 
Remember, West Virginia won ten games last year. They That's went right. ten and two. They were ten and two. Okay, this is their opening lines in the big games. At TCU minus thirteen and a half. Okay, they they're, preface this by saying all these numbers. West Virginia is the dog in every one of these games. They're not favored in a single big game, and most of these are all big numbers. At Baylor, minus 10. Versus Oklahoma State, this is in Morgantown, minus 4.5. So they're giving them a lot of respect. Should read off the first one. Yeah, TCU, yeah, TCU minus, minus 13 and a half. Yeah. Um, At Kansas State, minus 9.5. Kansas State is a team that will win ball games. They're not a team that blows people out. No. So uh, a 10-point line against Kansas State is crazy to me. Versus Texas in Morgantown. Man, they're giving Texas a lot of love. Going into Morgantown, six Texas point being favorite. a six-point favorite. And then at Oklahoma, 22. They have absolutely no respect for West Virginia at all to open the season up. Which immediately makes you think, all right, are they trying to get you to bet West Virginia? Or bet against them. Or bet against them. And the, and we, we, we had the same conversation about Baylor. I went into this before looking at these thinking Baylor was just garbage. Like, they shouldn't even be on any of these. Why is Baylor going to even be a big game at all this year? And they were on it a lot, and they were favored a lot. And in games they weren't favored, they were really close dogs to good programs. Yeah. So there's a couple of teams in the Big 12 mainly – that Vegas has drawn a line in the sand and said, we like this team, we don't like this team. They like Texas, they like Baylor, they seem to like Oklahoma State pretty well, and they have no respect for West Virginia. None whatsoever. And they kind of like Kansas State, which Kansas State's great at covering lines. When they're a dog, you can bet Bill Snyder all day long. Yep. But for him to be a, almost a 10-point favorite, that's – that's crazy. To that's me. that's pretty to a nuts. team that went ten and two. Yeah. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winning cures everything. Third, follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures or myself at Persevere Gary or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.